Ford, good morning, and uh, thanks for joining me this morning uh, to uh, help our Wellness Dentistry Network member dentists understand uh, a couple things uh, more about uh, diabetes and early identification of metabolic disorders. Um, good morning. Good morning to you, Doug, and uh, as we've mentioned, you'll also be helping my uh, channel subscribers uh, take a look at uh, the interaction between um, inflammation cardiovascular wise and in the mouth yeah and i think you know this slide uh, where what you see on the screen here is health beyond the teeth the time is now what's happening is uh again there's a lot dentists can do to help people out and so ford i've really appreciated your comments on several of these areas but on the screen the big question is if we control inflammation in the mouth and we collaborate with physicians like you um, can we really make pe people healthier? And what we're trying to show here is that, well, we can do this in the world of heart disease uh, through stabilizing some of the biomarkers plus uh, uh, vascular disease regression. We can be a part of that. We can help with uh, preserving brain health. We can help in this early detection of diabetes. Uh, you and I have already talked about, and you can look for it on our channel, about how to reduce inflammation, looking at some nutrition uh, ideas, and then the same thing about uh, on our channel about modulating the host. But today, we're going to talk about this morning, we're going to talk about diabetes in the early detection. And what can we do in a dentist office? Uh, and, what, you know, how can you help us better understand what we can do in a dentist office? So, um, for hey, Doug, let me interrupt. For some yep. reason, for a second, there, it's like when you were leaning back, we lost you. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. What? Um, what it's okay to, to just start again and yeah, It'd no, I can, just, I can just reiterate, was it <clears throat> that, you know. Okay, we, yeah, well, just start, start with that, that part where you're underlining that diabetes. Yeah, it's just, so, when, so controlling these inflammatory conditions, you know, collaborating with physicians is really what we're trying to do. And you and I have spoken about these other areas that you can see on the screen. And um, what we want to talk about today is in diabetes and early identification of metabolic disorders and what we can do in a dentist office to help our patients uh, become aware of this. And I know this is an area that's uh, near and dear to your heart. Uh, you do a lot on uh, diabetes and, and uh, insulin resistance and some of these things. So I wanted to try to put together something with your help that we could use in a, um, in a dentist office, easy to uh, help patients. Great. As you know, I mean, uh, it's a legacy thing for me. There is one common denominator for all of the big killers and disablers, heart attack, stroke, dementia, uh, even a lot of the cancers. They're uh, associated with chronic inflammation. And the chronic inflammation, for the most part, is coming from years of unrecognized prediabetes or metabolic syndrome. People think, well, wait a minute, this is a, I mean, regarding dentists being involved, people think, well, wait a minute, it's a, if it's heart, heart disease, it's a thoracic surgeon problem. Way too late if you're waiting for the thoracic surgeon. Way too late if you're waiting for the, um, for the uh, cardiologist, even for the doc. This is a public health issue. The, the damage from diabetes and the damage associated with heart attack, stroke, dementia, is all happening before the docs are even recognizing diabetes. They're not even recognizing it. They're not warning their patients. We need to move this much, much closer to the patient. People like dentists who are seeing them on a regular basis. Yeah, and now, you know, Ford, we have another interesting opportunity in dentistry. Uh, I think we have a new code this year about, um, and maybe we're going to start to get compensated for it. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but um, in-office A1C testing. You know, should we be doing A1C testing in office? And this was something that I've struggled with, and I wanted to give the patient something that would be, would be even more, uh, maybe more valuable than even just A1C testing. Because am I, is it right for that uh, A1C testing alone, it's going to pick off some of the people, but it's going to miss some too? Yeah, you know, if you're not getting A1C, at least, uh, do that. And I would say, I mean, I know that there are a lot of dentists that do that. I know that you're very familiar with it and I would clearly recommend it. Okay. But as you brought up, 
A1C routinely varies by about 10%. Well, if your A1C is five, then that means, you know, it could really be 4.5, which is closer to perfect than the vast majority of 50 and 60 year olds are ever gonna get anymore. Or it could be as high as 5.5, in which case you're burning your arteries. So <clears throat> yes, you're right, you do need something more. And I think that's, that's why you see some of the things that you have in these images up here. First, you need some education to, to understand some of the things that, um, that are involved with measuring this silent killer. Uh, one of the major, in Blood Sugar 101 by Jenny Rule is a great way to do that. Um, finger stick, blood testing is a great way to start looking at that. As you, you know, you and I have done a few uh, large seminars where we bring people in. We'll do blood sugar testing first thing in the morning. Um, we get a lot of conversation, a lot of information, and people start saying, I didn't know I had that. So it's a big deal. Yeah, and we can use, and you know, isn't it correct? We can just use one of these uh, glucometers that you can get at uh, down at the big box store, right? One of the um, simple glucometers. That's right. For a total investment of less than 30 bucks, you can start finding out where you are in terms of this, again, very prevalent silent killer. Okay, so for our Wellness Dentistry Network uh, professionals, uh, we have a, a simple... Uh, sheet that explains a little bit about why you want to know uh, what's the you know what the concern is why you'd want to know um, that's kind of the idea and then I think that the uh, and so in the middle of that uh, in the middle of that sheet it talks about what to do basically go get a glucometer doesn't cost that much like you said 20 bucks I guess the expensive part of the test strips and yep. um, right you get the test strips and what we're trying to get people to do is to, um, is to take a two-week window, and the first week, you want to take four measurements a day. I always do fasting, and then you want to take the uh, measurement one hour after you uh, eat a meal, right? Whatever that is, you eat a meal, and then you would, you know, take the measurement, and you'll write it down. We also have a recording sheet for them. And then the second week, you do the exact same thing, except you want to take the the recording two hours after you um, you eat, so you're going to end up with um, you know 12 measurements the first week, 12 measurements the second week. So for about 25 measurements, uh, then you can share the results with somebody like you for that really you know understands that. So this is a this is what the rec the record would look like. And when I see even on the, I think this is one of the actual. Uh, records that uh, somebody brought in and collected some measurements uh, for us. Um, but you can see from here with the fasting measurements of 120, 116, 95, 112, 121, 102, 114, this is a kind of a problem, right? Absolutely. Once you start getting up to about 100 on a fasting glucose, uh, you've got a problem. And clearly, if you're above it, now, as you know, about 10% of folks will show this kind of pattern. Uh, it's called um, the Dawn effect. Uh, we, our cortisol tends to peak at about four or five in the morning. Cortisol increases our blood sugar. Now, what's interesting, and, and these people will typically see this, and then they'll see their blood sugar drop after they eat breakfast. And they, again, it's counterintuitive to them, What's going on is, is you're having that dawn effect early. It's increasing your blood sugar. You're eating something. That's causing another bump. And then you get the insulin. <clears throat> now, this is a typical type of insulin reaction. Uh, this patient, I see you're, you've, you're saying age 71. Yeah. And the vast majority of folks, uh, Pat, 65 and above, have some sort of problem in this area. Now, this individual is going for hour after hour every day with significant blood sugar levels. Yeah, and Ford, when you said back a little, couple minutes ago, you talked about A1C of 5.5 and you're burning your arteries. What are those cut, point, what are those cut points that we as dentists, if when I see a A1C, when should I, how do I know when to tell somebody they should do something and when they shouldn't? Uh, if they're below five, they're safe. Okay. Now, again, 
if they're truly below five, they're right. safe. But it gets back to the discussion that we had. If let's say they're five, that means they could actually be five and a half. Sure. So again, even if somebody, you know, if somebody's four and a half and below, I wouldn't, they don't, they don't need to be worried about investigating more deeply. But once you get over four and a half, I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and start checking these uh, blood sugars. Um, maybe get an OGTT and maybe even a, uh, an insulin survey. Great. Okay. It's interesting. I have seen, I've seen a ton of patients, uh, John Lorscheider, who works with me on the, uh, on this channel is a very, very uh, well-informed uh, patient. He came to me saying, he was very typical, come, came to me, uh, I think he's in his mid-60s, came to me saying, oh no, I don't have a glucose problem. My docs, I'm very much aware of the issue. My docs have continued to watch it. We're pretty clear that it's, and yes, I've had an OGTT. We did an OGTT and that was, and, and it was fine. I still suspected a problem. So we did what's called a, an insulin survey. An insulin survey is an OGTT, you know, where you give the glucose challenge and you watch sugar for the next two hours. Yeah. It, ac it actually will go three and sometimes even four hours. In addition, it measures insulin at the same time. And John did a video, which is out there for the public, where he showed that he was fine for those first two hours, and then he went right up into uh, pure diabetic level, over 200. Wow. Wow. So again, especially for folks 65 and older, um, really be careful, even with an OGTT, because you may have that prolonged um, uh, result, that prolonged uh, increase in your blood sugar. Okay. Well, I know one thing for you, you've really stressed the importance to me of managing uh, blood sugar. And I thought glucometers were just for diabetics. But I would, uh, I would really like to, it's been an eye opening for me to learn a little bit. Uh, and you know, my A1C has been elevated for uh, quite some time. So trying to continue to bring that down, I'm, you know, I'm in mid fifties and I'm still, uh, I, I know my metabolics are changing like a lot of, like it happens to a lot of people around that age. And so I, um, I really need to, um, it's really created an awareness piece for me. And we're trying to do that for our patients as well. And the earlier, we can help discover these issues for patients, the better. Thanks again, uh, Doug. And I'll just, uh, it, it bears repeating and pardon me for if it is too repetitive, but I just want to make this comment again. If you wait, typically, if patients wait until their doctor tells them they have uh, diabetes or pre, even pre-diabetes, they've almost always waited too long. <clears throat> now is the time when you've got these uh, hemoglobin A1Cs from five to five and a half. <clears throat> That's the time that you're burning your arteries. Uh, by the time that your doc's actually picking it up, uh, uh, damage is done. Yeah, that's something. Ford, I, uh, I thank you. Thanks for your time today. I, I just uh, looked ahead. I think um, maybe next week or we, uh, in a, a time coming up, we can come back and we talk a little bit about hypertension. Look forward to it. Thanks again, Doug. All right. Thanks, Ford. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye now. Bye.